Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Character's Journey podcast, starring Joe and my wonderfully, fantastically talented friend, Joe. Sam. Oh. Yeah, it's me, Sam. Oh, no, you. Hi. <laughs> Happy April Fools. I'm Joe, Happy too. Happy April Fools. <laughs> we are all Joe. Yeah, we're all Joe. I, I actually, when I, uh, for those who don't know... Uh, I have a Twitch, Chibi Joe VT, and I'm a VTuber. That's what the VT means. It does not mean, of Ken's proper belief, it does not mean I am from Vermont. <laughs> I'm sure Vermont is lovely. I am not from there. It doesn't mean voice talker. It does not mean <laughs> <laughs> voice talker. I voice talk person. I, y- mm. uh, um, it's like, it's, that's why I give... Uh, a verbal write-ups. Verbal write-ups. <laughs> Only. Exclusively. Um, exclusively verbal write-ups. But when I started uh, doing uh, VTubing, I immediately, like, there was, like, four or five people that showed up every time. And uh, they called themselves the Joe Cult. <sighs> It was not comfortable. Is that the redeem reward of join the, join the cult totem? No, oh. uh, it should be. <laughs> that's but I no, thought. that's for a game. Yeah, no, oh. that's for a game. Well, that's uh, that I just never took off because it's like, oh well, it's one point. People could waste their one redeem point. Yeah. Okay. There. But no, there was also another cult called the Chibi Joe Cult uh, Collar Cult Coalition. And they were dedicated to getting a collar on my VTuber model. That's that was their purpose. Pretty upsetting and horrifying. It was really weird. It was started by my girlfriend at the time, surprisingly. <laughs> Katie was very dedicated to getting the collar onto my model. She's such a legend. She is. She is. She is a lovely person. Yes. You know who's not a lovely person? Tell me <laughs> this piece of that we're talking about today. <laughs> yes. So we're going to uh, talk about Tamlin from A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. And Joe, you've never read A Court of Thorns and Roses. <laughs> I have not. I have heard plenty, though, from you and from the other people that I follow on author TikTok. Yeah. So it's a beloved series. I'm very late to the game. I think it first came out in 2015, but it recently like really skyrocketed on Book Talk, um, just with the resurgence of romanticy genres, which shout out to our romanticy book, which is uh, in the works and in the process. But- yeah. First draft ready. First draft ready. So, yeah. So with the resurgence of romanticy, it's like it just has skyrocketed again because it was pretty popular when it first came out as well. Right. <laughs> and I I have heard many a spoiler because I am chronically online like we all are. And um, I still can't wrap my brain around this. Uh, Tamlin is the main love interest of book one. He is like the the super hot high lord fairy that everybody is supposed to fall in love with and our main uh protagonist Feyre does fall in love with um he's a piece of and i really can't understand <laughs> i can't understand why we're supposed to like him because everything he does is just terrible like it it boggles my mind the whole time i'm reading this book i'm like why the Am I supposed to like him? Why the f- would I spend more than two seconds in this man's presence? Are you f- serious? I, the rage, <laughs> I finished this while I was going to pick my friend up from the airport. I was in the car. Jesse was driving. Jesse, my husband, for those who don't know, shout out to my sweet, lovely, adorable husband. Uh, I love you. Um, he was Aww. driving. <laughs> he was driving. And I am getting so mad flustered even at this book like groaning in the passenger seat because I'm like can I just finish this (laughs) like I have 100 pages left can I please just finish this 
on the trip. And I literally, I finished the book. I looked at Jesse and I'm like, dude, I'm so pissed. This was the last line of the book. And it was something like, let's go home. Like, shut up. Oh. Like, I. <laughs> let's go home. Like, it just. I don't want to. We're going home. It's so dumb. It's so dumb, right? So, like, no disrespect to Sarah J. Mass. Like, you wrote a, a very compelling novel. And obviously, like, we all ate it up. And I have bought the second book in the series. And I'm going to finish the series. So, you know, like, you wrote a, a very well-written book. I just can't understand why we're supposed to like Tamlin. Um, <laughs> and I'm trying really hard. I was trying so hard today to find, like, any redeeming qualities to talk about. And I, <laughs> I kid you not, man, I literally can't find them. Oh, no. I literally, I tried. Like, I, I sent... Uh, I sent you a picture this morning, right, of my notes. And I was like, I'm struggling. And you were like, what are you struggling with? But that was what it was. I was like, I can't find anything nice to say about this character. Because <laughs> he's horrible. So I guess we can kind of start at the beginning. And you can see. Because you you know next to nothing, right? No. Cool. I know absolutely nothing. All right. We're going we're gonna to dive right in with the knuckle cracks, right? So... Oh. <laughs> so, okay, so the the book opens up. We meet Feyre. Feyre is a 19 year old human girl who um, has suffered a lot with her family. Like her family is very poor. Her dad made like a really bad business deal, which wasn't supposed to go bad, but it, it turned out going really bad because like I guess he was a trader, like a T R A D E R trader, not a traitor, like a pirate, but like a trader, like a you give me this i give you this um and the ships that he sent out sank at sea so all of his stuff was lost right and so like he owed these people money they came and busted up his leg like yeah like really bad stuff right so and then on top of all that yeah like her mom died um so she has kind of had to buck up and be the one who takes care of things because she has two sisters she has um elaine and nesta and Nesta will get into because I can't stand her either. <laughs> apparently she gets so much better, but it's fine. But so anyway, so there's one day and, and the book opens up with this, right? There's one day she's out hunting. She sees this giant wolf, the huge wolf, stares her in the eye. And she's like, oh, I'm not going to let this go to waste my family is starving so she shoots it but she is okay. she assumes because it's so big she's like oh this must be a fairy like in disguise because like the, these fairies that live on the other side of the wall in this place called uh prithian or prithian i can't i don't know how to pronounce it but i think it's i think it's prithian um they're not supposed to cross over into human territory and vice versa right so she's like oh this must be a fairy i'm gonna kill it I don't like fairies. She hates fairies. That's very important. <laughs> so <laughs> your I'm face right now is crazy. <laughs> I'm just imagining the scene from Peter Pan where everyone's going, I do believe in fairies. And she's like, chuck, chuck, and they go down. <laughs> yeah. She's like, uh, I'm not going to clap. Tinkerbell can lick my. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's literally fair. Just pulls out, just, just pulls out a flintlock pistol. Tell me where she is. Pretty much. So. <laughs> So she shoots the the wolf. She goes back home, whatever. All, all is well and all is done. <laughs> like a day or so later, a big fairy boy, <laughs> who we later find out is Tamlin, busts into the house in an animal form. <laughs> <laughs> like a big golden animal. And he is like, oh, you killed one of us and you gotta come with me now per the treaty it's that or i kill your whole family and she's like well i don't want to kill my whole family so i guess i gotta go with you right and he's like yeah if i got to yeah and she's like it's that or die right and she's like well i'd rather die and and um the you know her family's like no don't do that and, you know whatever so so she goes whatever she's there she ends up meeting uh which she met tamlin she meets alice who is one of the housekeepers and lucian who literally i would die for lucian i would die for lucian i thought i'm guessing he's an innocent happy boy he is um tamlin's best friend 
Okay. <laughs> Tamlin. <laughs> How Tamlin could attract the likes of Lucian is beyond me. I mean, it's not because it's pretty much like a friendship out of favor, but like we won't get into that, but it's fine. So, so Lucian is fantastic. I really did think the whole time reading the book, I'm like, there's no way it's not going to be Lucian. There's no way. There's, there's no way. He's so cute and he's so charming and so funny and he really takes care of Feyre. Like they have like such a cute relationship and then there's Tamlin. <laughs> like Tamlin is like that guy in high school who would ask where my hug is. You know what I mean? Where's my hug? Yeah, like where my hug at? Like, no, shut up. So, so I'm trying to collect myself. Like I'm trying not to scream in the studio because like I just, I can't do it. So a lot goes on. Feyre's a dumb sh She doesn't listen to anything Tamlin says. Come to find out, like later down the road, you know, Feyre's like, oh, I kind of like this Tamlin guy. And he's like, I kind of like you, Feyre, you human girl, who is 19, by the way. I mean, in fairy years. In fairy years, she's like an infant. So, sure. But <laughs> um, she's mature for her age. That's the that's the thing. That's the worst part about it all, right? So So Feyre is 19, mind you, and she's in love with this guy who kidnapped her. So there's some cute Stockholm syndrome going on. She she oh, later, some beauty in the beast. Well, here's what's worse about it all, right? Is before she's like, oh, I love him. She found out that Tamlin lied to her from the get-go. So he had told her, fairies can't lie. Like, we're not able to lie. So everything I say to you is true. And she's like, okay. Because she doesn't know any better. She doesn't know. like No, she doesn't know She doesn't know about fairies. She just hates them. She doesn't know. Well, she she knows a little bit, but she doesn't know that. And it's like a per the treaty kind of thing. And it's like a whatever. So turns out that was a lie. Um, he can lie to her. And he has been lying to her this whole time, right? So she, she finds that out. And she still is like, oh, I love him. Like, oh my gosh, he's so dreamy. Which he's not. He's ugly. But like, sure, that's fine. He's ugly. He's like... <laughs> Mm -hmm. he's like the way my little sister described it is that he's like um like the beast post transformation like when he transforms into the prince and it's like ew yeah. <laughs> like, so, uh, go back yeah like please just go back that's what he, he's not cute okay i'll risk being called a furry i don't want that face quite literally <laughs> like quite literally it's atrocious right so but he has this mask welded onto him as part of this curse that she also finds out about right um i'm doing a really piss poor job at like telling the story linearly but it's fine <laughs> so she finds out that that was a lie that that they can lie and that you know tamla was like oh i just you know i, I just told you this lie and i'm sorry and blah, blah, blah. And she's like okay i forgive you and it's so stupid so then he's like hey Farah, you got to go. Like, you can't stay here. Right. It's like a complete like 180, right? And so so she's like, what are you talking about? Like, I love you and I, I want to be here. Or she doesn't say I love you. I'm sorry. He tells her I love you. And she like, you know, she can't say it back or whatever because uh, she's a child. <laughs> she's not a child. She's she's 19 years old. So it's it's tough for her to be like, oh, yeah, like. I love you too, you know, especially under these horrible circumstances. So what she does instead is she tries. That you put me in. Listen, it's worse. It's worse, Joe. She believes she can convince him for her to stay if she sleeps with him. Oh, so she's toxic too. She's 19. He is 200 plus. It's still toxic behavior. He, like, oh, if he if he sleeps with me, that means I can stay. He lets her well, sleep with him. Yeah, of course he is because he's a piece. But then he goes, "All right, this doesn't change anything. Like you still gotta go." <laughs> <laughs> you dumb. <laughs> like, yeah. So it's like he's like, "You still gotta go. Like, this doesn't change anything, Farah." And so she's like, "Well, like, yeah, I'm you're good." She's like, I'm devastated. So, so she goes. He looks 
her in the eye, insult to injury, and is like, I love you. And she gets carted back home. So, so horrible, right? So this is scratching the surface, okay? This is great. This is scratching the surface, okay? I'm not even bringing in like rice or anything like that. Make it into a movie. They are trying to make it into a TV series. (laughs) <laughs> Have Zach Efron play Tamlin. <laughs> no, we're not going to... He's used to playing... We're not going to besmirch Zac Efron's name with Tamlin. Okay, we'll make him Lucian then. Yeah, honestly, that's perfect. I think that's great. I love Lucian. Who would you cast as Tamlin? Who would you cast as Tamlin? Literal dirt. Benedict Cumberbatch. I would literally <laughs> cast a pile of dirt to play Tamlin. It would have more charisma. <laughs> oh, no. I... So she goes home. Everything is great. Um, her family is super rich. Uh, like, e- everything Good is perfect and wonderful. Yeah, so Tamlin, like, kind of set them up. So that was one of the nice things he did. He's like, look, I took you from your family. I'm really sorry I took care of them. And she's like, what does that mean? And he's like, no, no, don't worry about it. Like, I took care of them. They're good. She goes back. They're super rich. Massive house. Um, nobody in the town remembers what happened. Like, so Tamlin, what he did before he took Farah or, like, right after, is he put uh, something called a glamour on the town and pretty much what a glamour is is it's like a a blinding like it's just forcing you to see a new reality okay so similar to like the mist in like the percy jackson series where yes you don't actually see monsters Mm -hmm. because of them okay everything is disguised in a way so okay nesta (laughs) nesta is the sister like the meanest one. And she I like, already love I hate her. I hate her so much. But like honestly, people were saying if you hate Nesta, it's because you are Nesta and just wait till you get into other books. And I'm like, I'm not Nesta. I'll be d- if I'm Nesta. We're not doing this. I don't like Nesta. <laughs> Nesta really sat up there and was like cocking attitude with Feyre and being like, I know that none of this is real. And I know that you were off with those fairies. And I know, you know, the glamour didn't work on me. The glamour worked on the whole town, but not on Nesta. Her mind is too powerful. Or she's too stupid. No, it's they're playing it like she's too smart, which I was like, there's no way on this earth that Tamlin could glamour another high lord. Because Tamlin, Tamlin's a high lord. I don't know if I mentioned that. He's a high lord. He's like the highest yeah. of the highs in the fairy, fairy dumb. He he's can, like, he's like basically like an emperor yeah like he like a king he's like a king he can glamour anybody and they'll fall for it but apparently not nesta so i'm gonna i'm 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 gonna i i'm going to besmirch uh sarah a little bit (laughs) how much you want to bet how much you want to bet she watches anime (laughs) because it's usually the characters that are like hyper intelligent. I honestly, I don't know. I don't get the vibe from reading it. I think it's just, but also then, you know, maybe they needed something for drama. It's just stupid. Like she needed an out. Feyre needed the out to go back. Yeah. To to Prithian. So. And so Nesta being like i'll reveal everything no she was really cool about it she's like hey like i just need you to know i know what's up it's like okay cool thanks nesta oh it was really like there was no reason there was no reason except you said this was compelling (laughs) i said it was well written because it forced you to keep reading but you wanted to stop (laughs) i'm trying to be nice Don't. Apparently, no, 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 no. Apparently, the first book is the worst written. So that's what I've heard. Obviously. But it was enough for me to be like, okay, like, I'll buy the second one and I'll see what this is about. Like, if the second book really doesn't grip me, I'm going to stop because there's five of them and I'm just, I don't have, I don't have the the mental capacity. (laughs) So all of this happens and then Feyre is like, oh my gosh, I love Tamlin. I need to go tell him. So she gets back. And she goes back to Tamlin's house in the spring court because he's a high I thought, like, Prithian is, like, this, like, hidden city or something. It's hidden behind a wall. It took her two days to find the entrance. (laughs) (laughs) I, okay, go on. It's like. Just just go on. (laughs) So she goes back. 
She's in, she's at the place. Alice sees her, um, which by the way, uh, Tamlin had glamored. That's another strike against Tamlin. Tamlin had glamored um, Feyre when she got there because she didn't, like, he didn't want her to see what everybody looked like, I guess, because he was just super nice and just didn't want her to be freaked out by all the fairies. Right. So he, he has kidnapped her, lied to her, and glamored her. Are we keeping tabs? We're keeping tabs. So she sees Alice. Alice is like, this is all your fault, Farah, because the place is wrecked. It's wrecked. And Alice explains, you're going to flip out, Joe. <laughs> Are you ready? I, can I guess? Can I guess? <laughs> you can guess. Can I guess? Let's hear it. Tamlin is destroying everything because no. Okay. Tamlin. Uh, remember I mentioned that curse, like, really briefly, where the mask was, like, welded to their faces? Yeah. This big bad, Amarantha, wanted Tamlin. That's a cool name. It's so cool. She's honestly kind of dope. Like, I kind of hated that she died. Spoilers. But <laughs> she wanted Tamlin to be her lover. And Tamlin refused. And there's a lot of depth to Amarantha. Like, she's a really hateful, angry character. Like, she killed her sister's lover and kept him alive somehow by, like, not releasing his soul and keeping his eyeball in a ring that she wears. Okay, that's dope. It's kind of dope. But yeah, like, she's kind of cool. I was like, hold on, Amarantha. Like, you're the main character to me. Um... Yeah, so, kill Tamlin, please. Like, honest, honestly, she wants to sleep with him so bad. And I'm like, for what? He's ugly. But sure. So she, so she's she, got nothing else better to do. She's sleeping with Ryzen, who is like canonically gorgeous. Feyre literally says the most beautiful man I have ever seen when talking about Ryzen. Not Tamlin, Ryzen. Why is she attracted to Tamlin? Uh, it, uh, it Does he, befuddles is she like me. a masochist? I think she's is a she... victim of Stockholm Syndrome. Like, I'm dead serious. Like, she... Oh, wow. This pretty man kidnapped me. Yeah. Woo! Oh, wow. So, she... That's what I always wanted. So, Amarantha... <laughs> it's the dream. So, Amarantha <laughs> is like, I'm going to curse your village and all of Prithian because you won't <laughs> me down. And she does. And she says... She goes, you have 49 years before I, I never release this curse. She's like, you have 49 years to find a, <laughs> you ready? Okay. To find a human who isn't afraid of Faye and hates them enough to kill one unprompted that has to fall in love with you. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm. <laughs> Tamlin. weird so Tamlin's How? like okay bet <laughs> and, <laughs> and he you remember that wolf at the beginning yeah that was one of his friends that he sent out to get killed it was Lucian's like best friend so like at the beginning of the Tamlin book, is an awful are we sure Tamlin's not the main villain he's the villain to me because like Lucian like, Amarantha is not like a good person like no, but at she, is, all, she at but... least sticks to her convictions. Like, she's she's not yeah. trying to be anything that she's not. She's, she's not terrible. lying. She's horrible. And she, she's like, she's, yeah. She's being down by Ryzen, so Ryzen's fine with it. Listen, no, he's not. Because it's like it's it's, it's like a slavery thing. Well, that's Ryzen's problem. <laughs> he actually... Listen, he what, a... what a couple does in their bedroom, what people... We're not shaming on this. On this podcast. He's actually so miserable. Like, he opens up to Feyre a little bit. And he's like, yeah, I hate my life. Because why are every, Why is everyone sharing with this random human girl? Who else are they going to talk to? What is so freaking... <laughs> anyone! Literally anyone. <laughs> well, it's all like... What is so special about Feyre? That's what, honestly, she can't read either. It's funny. Like, there's a... <laughs> so she really is just dumb. She Well, she's poor. She never learned how to read. <laughs> so there's this great, okay. There's this great. So, so Tamlin's literally just taking vul. So so Tamlin's just taking advantage over a vulnerable girl. You'll get a kick out of this. At literally the worst. Okay. <laughs> so Amarantha, like, um, so she goes. Okay, so Feyre 
here's all of this. And she's like, oh my gosh, everything is my fault. Like Sam Lynn is enslaved because of me because I didn't tell him I love her. I love him. So it's my fault because Tamlin sent her away like the day before the like last day of the of the 49 years that he was given. Right. Because he's like, oh, it's too dangerous for her. Like, OK, sure. So, you could have just told so, her like, hey, girl, I know you love me and I love you. I got this really bad situation going on. You think you could help me out? So I, I'm just here. Here's Lucy and kill him. <laughs> it's insane. Well, what I find so funny, though, is like, she's like, oh, man, this is all my fault. She and I'm does. I'm just imagining Tamlin going, wow, you gaslight yourself. This is easy. That's exactly what it is. It's, it's, she, he has, and I think this is his fault. He has put her in such a horrible situation that she has just in, like completely gaslit herself. Like, right. So but we'll get into that a little bit deeper. I'm just trying to give the overview of everything, okay. right? So she goes through all these trials. One of her trials... Uh, because Amarantha can respect it. He's, she's like, okay, like, you're really bold. Cool. You complete these trials. And I will um, release everybody. Cool? Cool. So she's like, okay, dope. And she, Except for Ryzen. No, even him. She says, she says oh. everybody. And so, because Ryzen's, like, actually the villain of the first book. Besides Amarantha. But we can, we can talk about that. Um... But she also says, I will release everyone immediately if you can solve this riddle. <laughs> I swear on my life. What is the riddle? I read the riddle. Let me see if I can find the riddle real quick. I don't have it with me, but. Uh... No, I'm looking this up. You keep talking. I'll look it okay. up. You're the, you're, the, you're the star of this episode. <laughs> Thanks. But uh, one of her. So, so one of the things that Alice said is like, hey, don't make any deals with anybody. So the first thing Feyre does, of course, when she gets down to where Amarantha is, is make a deal because she's an idiot. So one of the trials is literally for Feyre to read something or Lucian dies. <laughs> when I tell Why you, Lucian? I cackled so hard. <laughs> I need you. It's like C spot run. <laughs> like, it really literally was like a version of C spot run and like to fill in the blank or something on one of the levers. And, so, <laughs> and she couldn't do it. She couldn't do, like, it. Oh. she couldn't do it. She couldn't do it. Yeah. Lucian's like, please just pick one. Like, I don't want to die. Please pick one. Like he's terrified. And, and she I don't even care if it's right. At least you try. That's what he said. Yeah, because she's just letting it happen, and he's going to get crushed to death by these spikes. Like, that's the way he was going to die. And, so, and he's like, please, favor, just pick one. And she, I am begging you. And she's mad because she can't read it. And it's like, girl, like, just try. But You see lever. Pull lever. So, so Ryzen had struck a deal with Feyre as well. Because she had her arm broken in the previous challenge. And he said, hey, like, I'm going to strike a deal with you. If you come see me every two weeks out of the month when you're out of this, I will heal you up. And she's like, cool. I hate you. And he's like, yeah, the feeling's mutual, whatever. And so he heals her up, gives her like this sick tattoo on her hand. But he's able to communicate Mm -hmm. with her because they get like tethered or something through the connection. So he like mm-hmm. can give her the answer and be like, hey, like it's it's lever two, pull lever two. Don't let Lucian die. And she's like, oh, okay. And she pulls lever two and he doesn't die. Anyways, did you find the riddle? Cool. I did. Did you immediately guess the answer? Like I did? I haven't read it yet. Oh, okay. I want you to read it and guess the answer immediately. There are those who seek me a lifetime, but never we meet. And those I kiss, but who trample me beneath ungrateful feet. At times, I seem to say, favor the clever and the fair. But I bless all those who are brave enough to dare. By large, by ministrations. Who the f*** uses <laughs> ministrations? Amarantha. She can die with Tamlin now. <laughs> by large, my ministrations are soft-handed and sweet. But scorn, I become a difficult beast to defeat. For though each of my strikes lands a powerful blow, when I kill, I do it slow. Like immediately, right? 
maybe I'm dumb. I'm not good at riddles. I was like, please don't pull a favorite on me. No, I'm just not good at riddles. So the answer is love. Or any puzzles. The answer is love. Okay, see, I was thinking love. Yeah, immediate. It, it was too obvious, right? I was thinking love just from the, by large, my ministrations <laughs> are soft handed and sweet. I'm like, oh, okay, it's, it's love. love. But I thought, I thought it was the, I thought it was such a himbo answer yeah. that I was like, oh, it can't be that. No, one. it's that obvious. Feyre could not okay. for the life of her guess it. She went through like different types of diseases. <laughs> is it is it tuberculosis quite literally she went through the disease that killed her mother and she goes oh i know that killed her pretty slow so like maybe it's that i, just, I don't know i know i know it. what i was like there's no way i laughed i was like jesse i looked at him when i read it i said there is no way there is no way there's no way there was a way fair is dumb she's dumb yeah so See, I was thinking love because that was the easy answer. And I'm like, nah, surely it's not that. Surely it's like something that's like in the book or anything like that. No, don't, don't feel stupid. Because I said the same thing. I was like, there's no way it's that easy. Like I. Like this is the climax, right? Like this is the big moment. This is the big moment. And Farah is so stupid that she. So. So I got a question. I get like this episode's about Tamlin. <laughs> but why are we supposed to like Feyre? Like, I, she's useless. She, she did one thing. She's useful. She has done one thing so far. She's useful, but she just... She's not good with social things. So, like, she's not good at reading. She's not book smart, but she's, like, she'll survive in the forest. You know what I mean? Okay. So I'm making excuses for her. But so anyway, so like all of this happens. She has this riddle. She can't figure it out. She makes it through all of the the trials and the tribulations that Amarantha has designed for her. Right. <laughs> and then Amarantha's like, LOL, psych. I didn't say when I would free everybody. <laughs> it's like the ultimate gotcha. So we're just going to, so we're just doing Saturday morning cartoons. Pretty much. That's what we're doing. Pretty much. So she's like, I, she was like, psych. This is a terrible book. <laughs> She's like, psych. So she, I have not even read it. So she starts to break every bone in Feyre's body. Good. Feyre dies. I'm all for it. Feyre dies. Good. But before she, I'm all for before this. she dies, she is able to say that the answer is love. So everybody is then released. Everybody's power is but she restored. Already, she already f***ed it up. She did. She did, but she still... You can't go to overtime when the score is three to zero. Well, to be fair, Amarantha never said when she could answer it. She just said that she had to answer it. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she answers it. Uh, Tamlin then proceeds to rip Amarantha's throat out, which was kind of cool. I thought that was neat. Um, and every High Lord there gives a part of like some weird fairy soul thing and brings... Uh, Feyre back to life and now she's a fairy I hate everything about this book I <laughs> if you guys like gaslighting <laughs> characters super simplistic writing it's very simple it's it's it was originally it was safe. marketed I think as a young adult novel and it is now been, young adults deserve better. It has been changed to a new adult novel because there's sex in it. So, <laughs> I hate everything. I think I just watched your soul I die. <laughs> So new sorry. adults deserve better i'm so sorry but young adults deserve better everyone deserves better than this so look, i said the same thing about twilight i get it i really do but ah uh, in my opinion mm -hmm. edward cullen is still less manipulative than tamlin because it's saying something it's because saying edward a lot cullen lives off of manipulation so let's let's break tamlin down a little bit let's get into more nitty-gritties of why i i hate him 
So you okay. have the overview now. So like everything happens and Pharaoh wakes up and she's like, oh my gosh, I love you. You know, and he's like, I love you too. Yay. And they're happy. Whatever. So they happy. When, when Pharaoh is kidnapped and brought over on false pretenses, right? Like Lucian is pretty mad at her. Understandably, she did end up, you know, she killed his best friend. So yeah. He's like, I don't really like you, but I'm going to play nice because I'm not a like Tamlin. So he's really nice. Like he tries to be nice. He um, helps her out. There's this great scene with Lucian where um, Pharaoh really wants to hunt down this thing called a cereal because a cereal will be able to tell you everything. Um, it's also part of a balanced breakfast. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she wants to hunt down the cereal. And she is like, I can ask it anything and it'll tell me everything I want. And Lucian, <laughs> Lucian is still having to pretend that he can't lie, right? So he goes, he goes, I'm not saying to do this because Tamlin would kill me. But if I was going to, here's how I would do it. And he gives her like step-by-step -step instructions on where the cereal will be. He's like, and you know, if something were to happen, theoretically... I'll just be a couple of feet away anyway. So if you yell loud enough, hypothetically, I'd be able to hear you. So Farah's like catching on. She's like, oh, okay, like, cool. That's cool. And Lucian's like, and by the way, this kind of weapon, in theory, is what would work best if you found yourself in trouble. Make sure that if you were going to go, that you would have it. And he's like, He's just the best. I love him. I love that like snide stuff, right? So obviously she gets into trouble because of course she does. Tamlin ends up rescuing her somehow. He was closer. Lucian finds her like the next day and apologizes and says, I am sorry that you almost got hurt. He's like, I'm glad Tamlin got there before I did. He's like, I have to be honest with you. When I heard you yell, I hesitated. He's like, I, I know it wasn't right. And I'm sorry. He's like, but I, I have a lot of anger still because you killed my friend. The world would have been a better place. <laughs> the world would have been a better But place. it's like the reality of that was so appreciated. Yeah. Like him being like, I'm sorry. He's like, I hesitated. It was just for a second, but I still did it. And I owe you an apology. That's like the realest thing in the world, you know? Because it's like, how would you react if, this thing yeah. that you're in charge of protecting like killed one of your best friends. It's like, yeah, I'd probably hesitate too. Are you serious? So Lucian comes. There was another great scene with Lucian that um, him and Tamlin are talking about this curse and Feyre's not supposed to know about it, right? But she overhears it and so she comes in and Ryzend, who is the really handsome big bad, pops into the room. Tamlin throws up a glamour to disguise her and they take an extra measure to hide her behind a curtain, which Lucian stands in front of, just in case. So Ryzen is able to break through the glamour and sees Feyre and is like, who's that? And Lucian, quick, is like, that's my betrothed. You can't touch her. You know what Tamlin did? Tamlin sat there and was like, leave her alone. Get out of here, Ryzen. Get out. Like, he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. You stupid, smelly loser. Pretty much. He didn't do anything because he was afraid. He didn't do anything. When Feyre came back to be like, Tamlin, I love you, he didn't look her in the eyes. Like. I wouldn't either. One's probably like slightly askew. Well, so funny thing about that is Lucian has a, uh, no. a robotic eye. But he still oh, managed cool. to, to look her in the eye. Like every time. Yeah. So mad I'm moody. So Tamlin, Tamlin's not looking at her. You know, she's like, hey, like, I love you. And he's just like avoiding the gaze. And she builds it up in her brain like, oh, he's trying to protect me because Amarantha will kill me if she knows how much he cares about me. You're stupid. Stop having so much thought. It's so dumb. It's, it's so dumb. But so there are girls, Joe, on TikTok who okay. when... Akatar came out. There's one girl in particular, and everybody knows her. She's so infamous because she, she realized she messed up. But I think she messed up sooner than she realized. She got a tattoo of Tamlin's name after book one. 
And I am over here trying to figure out what about book one, Tamlin, was so appealing to you that you felt the need to permanently brand yourself with his name. I can't figure it out. So I'm I'm going to hop into the anime uh, 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 pilot seat for a second. Yeah, go for so it. So most, uh, and I don't know if, if the people who listen to us are anime fans. I imagine they are. It seems like it seems like a podcast that would appeal to anime fans, even if we don't talk about anime characters yeah. yet. Weebs unite! Yeah, Krillin's coming soon. Don't worry, so, <laughs> Krillin. That's gonna be. Both of us are just going to gush. Both of us love Krillin <laughs> and Gohan. Oh, Gohan and Goten. Oh, <laughs> you can call me Mister Gohan. I'm gonna sob. and Vegeta. No. Oh. D- <laughs> Both of us love Vegeta, though. There is an archetype known as a yandere. Mm -hmm. Yandere's are, I don't care how you twist it, are evil. They are evil. They are literal, like, the stereotypical, I mean, you could, like, there's people who, like, well, technically, there's actually, um... Other types of yandere's, (laughs) it actually just means that they're obsessive. No, I don't care what you say. You're wrong. Yandere's literally are the the whole purpose of them is to serve as the like pro antagonist character, not anti hero. Do not give them that. They can be, but their purpose is to kill anyone who gets close or or remove. If we were going to be really nice, remove any possible competition towards the object of their obsession. I would say love, but that's not that. No. So, that is the most popular archetype researched. That is the most popular archetype. I do, I used to do a lot of like role play audios on YouTube. I did a Yandere series because I love Yandere's not in the sense of I want to be with a Yandere, but they're a fun archetype to write. Sure. Writing someone who's like, I'm going to do anything and everything to make sure you are mine. Even if you do not want to be. Now you see where I'm going with this. I see where you're going with this. So my most popular audios on my channel are the Yandere audios. Mm-hmm. Three of the three of the five episodes are my most popular, most viewed on my channel because people love the obsessiveness and they also love the abuse. Yeah. Of it. I okay. I get behind that. They love the domineering. They love the absolute I'm not going to let you give me control i'm just going to take it and you're going to be worthless but i'm going to make you think that i think that you're worth something right and and i get that i understand i'm not here to to yuck anyone's yum i am but (laughs) there is something so insistently gross about tamlin it just, it makes me angry because he, he's not intentionally making her feel worthless. He's just an, that's all it boils down to. I saw somebody who thought Tamlin was so it's cute. the Jersey Shore. <laughs> he, they thought he was so sweet. They were in tears over how kind it was of him to buy her paint and, and to like, well, she was a painter, right? So I didn't, I didn't mention oh, that. Oh, okay. She, she likes to paint. She can't read, but she likes to paint. <laughs> Just randomly gave her paint. Here you go. Well, he like got her all these colors because she was like looking at, <laughs> she was looking at the art, and he's like, "Oh, do you do you like art?" And she's like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Well, if, would it make you happy if you had some paint?" And she was like, "I yeah, I don't know. I don't like it here." And he's like, "Oh, well, okay. I'm gonna get you paint anyway." And she's like, "Fine, whatever." And he's like, "Okay, I get you paint." She gets, he gets her paint. He gives her a whole room to paint in. 
that's whatever. Too, that's nice. Okay, but does it undo the lie, the no. manipulation, <laughs> the kidnapping, the, the Stockholm, glamour. the glamour? Like, no, it doesn't undo any of it. And to no. sit here and be like, oh, well, that was nice. It's like, no, it's still not nice. It is the bare minimum. The bar of standards that we're expected to like is in hell. And I don't understand yeah. it. And I don't know if I'm the problem. Because, like, again, I see all these girls. They're like, oh, that's so cute. That's so sweet. Even you just now. You're like, oh, that was nice. I'm like, no, it's not. Like, he... Well, yeah, it's a nice gesture. I'm not saying it justifies anything. It's a nice gesture, but it's the bare minimum for kidnapping somebody. You know what I mean? It's like, yes, you have to live here forever. You know, assuming assuming he didn't lie, because at this point she didn't know if he was lying or not. So under her her thought process is if I was Farah, I would still not be that... Of, therapy? Yeah. I would still... Be like, I think this is the bare minimum you can offer me. You took me from my family. You've you've Don't forced worry, me. I took care of him. <laughs> yeah, took care I of took them. care of him. Don't worry. But it's like you've you've removed me from my situation. You've removed me from my home. You have told me I'm not allowed to leave. Yeah, she's, you're not. She's not allowed to leave the court. Yeah. Oh, but here's some pain. So I, I don't, I don't see what the, what I don't, I don't see what the problem is. Well, Fair is also stupid, right? Because Lu- or uh, Tamlin will be like, "Sorry, Lucian, I didn't mean to disparage you," but um, Tamlin will be like, "Hey, don't do this," and she'll be like, "Okay," and then she'll go do it. And it's like, just like the weird obsession with Yandere's. Um, or like people like. Oh my God, Joker and Harley Quinn are like such a cute couple. Teehee. Not mentioning how he has thrown her out of a window, f- almost fed her, you know, fed her to her, her own hyenas. Um, killed, like, whenever he, like, she finally got away from him, he, like, kept on trying to gaslight her. And to coming back, and then whenever she like stopped listening, he just like, well, fine, I'm just gonna kill the the guy that you were just with. Right. Very romantic. And yeah, and like the people who are like, oh my god, like Harley Quinn and Joker forever, and I'm like, okay, this is what I this is like, I hate this. Like I'm actually going to be upset because like I I truly hate characters like this and how people try to romanticize. Saxon. It truly upsets me. The fact that people romanticize this literally makes me want to vomit and literally wants me to go up to the author and just absolutely verbally destroy them and tell them how disgusting it is that they thought this was a good idea. I don't give a f- if Tamlin gets better in future books. I don't. He gets worse. I don't at all. He gets worse? He gets worse. Good. I hope he gets... Oh my Somewhere in the book, it's, I'm assuming Faze have penises. He well, he. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Whoever writes that for a sex scene needs to stop writing. It, it was really upsetting. Like I, I mean, I guess it is how she he sees her though. He sees her as an object, so I guess it makes sense. But it's all from Feyre's perspective. Well, then Feyre, you know, feyre has been gaslit by herself to think she's an object. So, so she, it makes sense. She's like, I'm going to convince him to let me stay if I sleep with him because I love him and I don't want to lose him. Right. Like this is all going through her brain. And she, again, she's 19 years old. I'm not saying it's OK, but your brain is not fully developed until you're 25. No, not at all. You are still thinking crazy outlandish thoughts. This is the behavior yeah. I would expect from a girl her age. So she does it. He lets her. He's older. He's a lot older. He lets her knowing that he's still going to send her away. Knowing that she's doing this out of emotional yeah. desperation. He lets her. And he takes advantage of that situation. <laughs> the way it's written in the book is like he sheathed inside of her, which made me want to actually crawl out of my skin. And then is like, the, the, you know, after they're done, she, he's like, nah, you still got to go. Like, you can't, <laughs> like you, you can't stay here. 
thanks for the good time. But it, it's like it's vile to me because it's like that to me that was being she was being taken advantage of. Like, yes, she is technically an adult. Yes, she initiated. But Tamlin exploited the situation. And like, to me, that's enough to be like, you're a piece of garbage character. You make me want to throw up. And again, like that's not even talking about the lies or the manipulation or the fact that Lucian is a so much better character or the fact that Feyre literally looks at Ryzen and is like, you are the most beautiful man I've ever seen in my life. And he is such a jerk and I love him for it, dude. Like that is, <laughs> like Ryzen is the type. He's the type. Like, I'll just spoil the rest of the series, right? Like, Feyre ends up with Ryzen in the end. But at the- What? I, yeah, I know. I know. Sorry. Spoilers. I can probably take it out, but- I'm so- I am- s- No, you're not taking this out. You are not taking this out. <laughs> yeah. You are not. She ends up with Ryzen in the end. Why? Oh, my <laughs> God. This so girl- Because he's so handsome. This girl needs therapy. He's kind of cute, though. Like, you all need therapy. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. Like, he's kind of funny. Listen, he does some really bad stuff. Okay. To be expected. Like, he... Right, he's the villain. He's the villain. He... And, and it, they spin she it... He ends up with. They spin it in a way that I am, I am like, okay. I, is... Is the author okay? No. So here's what Ryzen does to, to Feyre, right? <laughs> oh my God, the way you went, no. no I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so. So what happens with Feyre is he takes her to all these parties. And right. this is after he's branded her. So like she has this really cool like cat eye in the middle of her hand now and like smoke tattoos all the way up her arm. And he... <sighs> Every night will, or like every time there's a party, will paint her body. Like he won't do it. He'll have somebody else do it with the same like symbols. And what he says is he's like, I can see if anyone else has touched you because my hands are not going to affect this paint, which on the surface, you're like, okay, I no, I know. I know. Hear me out on the surface. You're like, okay, this could potentially be a safety measure. Because Pharaoh was beat the heck up when she first got there. Like, knocked out, beat up. Okay. It also is a way to rub it in Tamlin's face saying, look what I have and you can't. Which sucks and he shouldn't do that. What gets but worse. But it's towards Tamlin. But what, what's worse about it? And this was the defensible part, right? Was the, okay, the painting I can understand, the taking her out and parading her around. I guess I can understand because she's not locked away in a cell for hours and hours and days and days on end. Okay. Right. The way she was dressed was inexcusable. <laughs> she was dressed like, the way it was described is like muslin. So like really thin and sheer. So oh. like she was just, yeah, so, she was on display. Um, yeah. And Ryzen would get her drunk on Feywine every night. And she would just completely lose her memory and do whatever bidding Ryzen had for her, which he never really touched her. Like, I don't want to. Yeah. Okay. It's still not okay. But like, he never took advantage no, of her in that least... way, but he would like have her dance and like sit on his lap to like mess with Tamlin. So. I mean, I'm all for with Tamlin though. It's not Okay. But, it's not okay, no, because she's not consenting to any of it. But, but when he... So one of her challenges uh, throughout the other three challenges that Amarantha had for her was, like, to do household chores. One of her chores one day was to clean the lentils out of Ryzen's um, fireplace with nothing but, like, a candle. So she's, like, trying to get in there, and Ryzen shows up in her like in his room, and he's like, what are you doing in here? And she's like, I'm cleaning up your stupid fireplace. And he's like, Why? And she's like, because like, that's, that's like what I'm supposed to do. And he's like, oh no, don't, don't do that. That's stupid. And like cleans it. He just like snaps his finger. He's like, no, like get out of here. Like, what are you doing? He's like, that's stupid. You're not doing that. Well, that's nice. I, th that's what I said. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we take all of this together. Right. And then coupling that with the fact 
that he's a slave to Amarantha physically. It's like, okay. Okay, so my I'm going to defend right. Does, does Ryzen just hate Tamlin? Like, is that yeah. the issue? Because it seems like Ryzen doesn't like her in that way. He's just doing it because he hates Tamlin. He, so he, he is attracted to her. Well, that's okay. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not okay. It's not okay, but it's like, ah. But, but it's like, okay, well, at least there's attraction there. But So one thing that he did that I loved um, and this is okay. this is the last thing I want to defend about Ryzen because this is what sealed it for me with Ryzen. Tamlin and Feyre snuck off together. The like one time he okay. looked her in the eyes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he like saw her at the party. He like came up to her and like touched her finger or something, and she followed him out. And they were like starting to make out in a closet, and Ryzen comes in and is like, "You guys are gonna get in trouble." Like it's the funniest thing because he's like tisk tisk, you guys like. What are you doing? And he's so posh. He's so funny. I was like, this is ridiculous. And so he chastises both of them and is like, you guys are going to get yourselves killed. Like, this isn't funny. Like, stop. And um, Tamlin leaves. And he immediately takes the place of Tamlin, like, kisses Farah and, like, puts her hands above her head or whatever. And Farah's like, what are you doing? Like, what the frick? And... Like, not even three seconds later or something, Amarantha comes in. So Ryzend was not only protecting Tamlin, but he was also really, really protecting Feyre. Because Amarantha could care less what Ryzen does. And she really right. could care less about Feyre. She cares about Tamlin. Well, cares about Tamlin. Um, right. She wants Tamlin where Ryzen's at. Ryzen knows that Feyre will be killed if she, you know, tempts Tamlin, which is the defense for why Tamlin is such a d to her, like, when she comes back. But, like, honestly, I, I can't even... I think it's just his personality. I think I think it's just, yeah, he's just showing his true colors at that point because it's like, there's no reason for you to act that standoffish. He never went to see her either, like, when she was locked up. Lucian and Ryzen did, though. Okay, so Ryzen has redemptive qualities he does not saying he's a good person it seems like no one he, is he gives me a starry on vibes where okay so where he's evil because his circumstances yeah need him to be yeah he's deeply okay. hurt and wounded and it seems that he wants to do good but he also just really <laughs> hates tamlin <laughs> so well i so do As i you should so do i i I I hate <laughs> Tamlin as a character because, again, we're supposed to like him in book one. And I can't, for the life of me, figure out why. It's, he's just the, I would rather gargle hot glass than spend 30 seconds in Tamlin's presence. Yeah, it just seems like Tamlin is just an actual terrible person. That's the Amarantha thing. is more redemptive than he is. <laughs> she's the... She's horrible, dude. Like, she's kind of cool, but, like, she's she's bad. But it's, like, I just, I, I cannot wrap my head around why these girls, like, lose their minds over Tamlin. And it makes me think harder about, like, the books we read and the media that we're forced to consume. The standards are literally in hell. Yeah. And it's, like, okay. Again, let's go with um, um, the Yandere mm -hmm. example I had. One of the most famous yandere's, I can't remember her name on top of Juno or you know, you know, from Future Diary. I was like, I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, no, no, you know's her name. Okay, like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, from, from Future Diary, literally manipulates him, the main character, to kill all of his friends because she said, when you become, because the whole point of Future Diary. And I'll I'll definitely do an episode of on on you know, and um, oh what's his name? Oh well, don't matter. Um, so they had a um, the, there there's this game going on, and basically this game is to see who becomes the next god because the old god is dying. Oh, I started watching that anime. The ending is awesome, but the rest of the anime, she tricks him into killing all of the all of his friends, 
that he's made in this during this game. Because she told him, when you win, or even if I win, you can bring them back. Knowing full well, because of stuff that we find out later, you can't. Once someone dies, they're dead. Mm. That is, the, their purpose is gone. They're, they're, they're very, the very thought of them is over. That version of them is done. And lets him do it. And he doesn't find out until right afterwards. It's like, no, you can't bring them back. They are gone forever. And the person who told him that said he killed because he's like, how dare you say she's a liar? And everyone's like, she is like ultimate waifu material. And I'm like, what is wrong with you people? What is, I know, I love Sundere's. I do. I love the Sundere archetype. I find them funny. And I can also find when that moment when they are like, when they finally have like nowhere to run emotionally because they've just spent all the excuses. It is so cathartic. Mm -hmm. Toradora is one of my favorite romance animes. It is so good. I recommend anyone to watch it. It's 25 episodes of just pure writing gold. Anyways, this is how I see Tamlin, where everyone's like, oh my god, we love Tamlin. Why? Well, that's my question. Because he's a dominant character. But he's not, though. He's a dominant to her. But that's because she's powerless it's it's literally exactly like, it's a domination girls, of like girls and guys in these areas like power like being powerless to a more powerful character I, it, it's why people romanticize Raphael from Baldur's Gate 3 it just it bothers me a lot right like because I am such an advocate for for valuing yourself yeah. You know, like I I cannot get behind. And I like mean characters. I can talk, you, you know, do. I can talk all about this. Like I love Astarion. I'm trying to romance Astarion so bad in Baldur's Gate 3 and my husband is trying to help me like looking up ways that I can do it and I'm like please don't spoil and he's like you have to be mean and I was like I can't do that to him. I can't be mean to him. He's like you have to. I'm like I can't do it. Um well and then there's like and then like Vegeta, you like Vegeta. Yeah, of course. Oh my gosh, who doesn't? Please. But, like... Vegeta's awesome. Vegeta's so cool. But, like, there is something so inherently sadistic and disgusting about the way Tamlin carries himself that I am so repulsed. I literally can't find a single redeeming quality about him. He... I can't understand. Even Lucian, again, he hesitated to save her. He was like, I hope she dies. Effectively, that's what he said. He's like, I hope she dies. And then he was like, I shouldn't think that way. Crap. And goes to try to find her. And owned yeah. it. He's like, look, I'm sorry. I've been rude. Lucian wanted to do a really bad thing, but he's a good person deep down. That's what I'm saying. Is he? Tamlin saved her because he was close by. It's just gross. Because he saved her because he needed her to complete this ritual thing that he chose not to tell her about. He could have told her. Like, yes, she would have been mad. But knowing Ferris character and knowing how desperately and deeply she was in love with him to the point she was like giving her body to him. I think she would have been like, oh, okay. He could have been like, look, like this started out this way. I'm sorry. That was really crappy of me. But like, I need you. everything else. Yeah. I need you to know that these feelings are very real from me. And I care about you and I love you. And I need you to tell me if you love me because we can work this out afterwards. Like I need to free my people, you know? I don't see why. That's a conversation. Not, not a dip. Like get out of here with that. It makes me so mad because it's like, I just, it just makes me so I mad. Just, I don't. People, are, this is going to be like the worst viewed thing because like we're all just I, I well not you I am I'm just like you're all dumb. <laughs> I I I'm gonna flat out say it. Anyone who finds I'm not saying anyone who likes yonderes, like 
if you like a character that's a yandere, good for you. I, I love the character of Yuno because of how effed up she is. And just, like, how it starts off, like, just cutesy, obs- like, obsessive schoolgirl and then just keeps escalating and just keeps escalating higher and higher and higher until you get to that final act. That's great. You want to know that? You want to know why? I love Joker. Probably the most depraved villain oh, yeah. in comic book history. Was my favorite. Why do I love him? Because he's amazing. He's amazing as a villain. He was my favorite until we wrote our villain. <laughs> now that one's my favorite. <laughs> I appreciate it. I I am terrified <laughs> deep down genuinely <laughs> of, of our <laughs> villain. <laughs> like the fear is real. The fear is real. I think this is I think the name of this episode should be romanticizing abuse. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. Like I can't understand and it's the same issue I have with Colleen Hoover who literally romanticizes domestic abuse. Like quite yeah. literally there is a book of hers where the main male character beats up the female character and is like, oh, baby, I'm so sorry. You know, I have problems. I just, I just, I truly, I can't. You all need help. And I mean that with all of the love I have for humanity. And I have a lot of it. I do. I have a lot of it. And it really bothers me when people whether as the author or the consumer romanticize a, a terrible, abusive, inexcusable character. You can argue with about Vegeta. I will counter argue Vegeta's culture is a cruel animalistic warrior culture. He's also like Vegeta is redemptive because like, yeah, he's a, but like, he promised his He's kid. He's not a hateful. He promised his kid, I will take you to the amusement park if you can land a punch on me. And he did, did. And he took him to an amusement park. <laughs> like, yeah, like. He was miserable, but he still did it, you know? Vegeta. I'm not saying that people shouldn't like these kinds of characters. I'm cool with people being a fan of a character. Again, I'm a fan of pretty much every villain in Batman's rogue gallery. And they're all depraved human beings. That's why they're villains. The whole purpose of them being a villain is that they're evil. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. But to romanticize and say, oh my God, that's who I want to be with. Essentially. Yeah. That is so depraved and disgusting it's really sad because either you don't value yourself or you don't realize what you're reading and that that's the thing is you can like something in a book and not like it in real life for example i really like the book uh the joker <laughs> the, well yeah and the laws of the skies is where i was going um yeah i don't actually want people to get hurt or eaten by boars that's horrible But I enjoyed the book. But there crosses a line of threshold where you are crying and sobbing about this character doing something sweet when really it was just to further a plot. Because I can't wrap my head around the fact that he actually loves Feyre. No. He may lust for her. Honestly, at this point, I don't even know if it's that. I think it's a power play. It, he, he seems like the type. And maybe that's what Sarah wanted. And it just. Maybe, maybe we're insid- all the fools. Happy April fools. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe, maybe Sarah wanted to have a character that was depraved as the love interest. I doubt it. I, I, most, most young adult slash new adult books. I really. Well, it's, it's. At least the ones that. I've heard people read and stuff like that. I don't read a lot. I'm, I, I'm just now starting to read more. I'm, I'm mainly like a gamer and anime watcher, which is why I know that side of things. But it seems like they, they play it safe. I'm not saying all of them do, but a good majority of them go for like the simplistic and you're, you're getting what you're getting. Yeah. Um, Twilight is probably the most notorious one in that. And then yeah. 
after that. Also, people who say Fifty Shades of Grey is a young adult novel needs to oh. absolutely step in in a courtroom, please. That's that's jail, immediate jail. That was in <laughs> that was in my school's library. Oh no! Oh, we need to talk about the library book bans because some of them are so. That that could be a podcast. That could be a podcast on its own. That... Just us talking about the book bans. Oh, There's some gosh. of them that need to be like that. That I'm okay with being banned from school libraries. Like Fifty Shades of Grey. Most of them I'm not. But Fifty Shades of Grey should be. If it's not, yeah, it should be. That's wild. If it's not, it needs to be. Um, that should not be. I I don't care if if on outside of school kid finds it, wants to read it, whatever. I don't care. Like that's a that's a choice between parent and child. That's not my play. In a public school setting, that has no place. I'm not for censorship. I am for appropriate places. It's like the whole thing with Lauren Miracle. Like, her books are available in schools. They shouldn't be. No, they shouldn't be. Anyways, um, um, yeah, I don't I don't like to yuck anyone's yum. I like to consider myself a pretty open-minded human being. But there is just something about, and I have sent you these TikToks every time I see them, like, of these people praising yeah. Tamlin. And I'm like, for what? Yeah, I, I I think our the title needs to be romanticizing abuse or something similar to that because that's what this character is. It's romanticizing abuse. I don't know if that was Sarah's intentions. She's not here. I'm not going to put words in her mouth. However, the presentation is all that matters, not your intentions. I, I have respect for, for Sarah because she, like I said, you know, she wrote a book that is easily consumed and it blew up on book talk and a lot of people love it. And that's, that's Good for really her. hard. It's hard to write a book guys. It is. Um, it's hard to write lovable characters. Um, unless, Gosh. unless there are male main character, he can do no wrong. <laughs> like, he could slaughter a village and I'd be like, ah, he had his reasons. It's fine. <laughs> I, could, I had no reason I, nah, he's just being humble he's a cutie right he is and and it's like it's so difficult to write compelling characters it's so hard to it is to write especially a romance novel like i have found that myself especially by yourself you and i tag teamed on that book yeah it's really and hard and it still was extremely hard and we're still not done with it <sighs> we just finished the first draft at the end of february and grammarly is gonna love us <laughs> but- oh but the point is, the, the fact that this character who all he does is abuse this character, except for giving her some pain. But even still, that can be argued that that's a, that's a way to keep her compliant. Yeah. I told you to stay a, here. A You're not staying branch. here. Here you go. Here's some paint. So you stay here. And then it's, it's the jingling of keys immediately. Okay. You got to go. That's so like, just, unfair to her. We need to stop <laughs> that. Like, if we're going to view it wrong as a social standard, psychologically, we should hold it as wrong in a book. And I and and like, I'm I, I can see one commenter on the YouTube side of things. By the way, go to Chibi Lucian Audios on YouTube. Yeah. Um commenting something along the lines of you guys are just yeah we're over analyzing like that's the whole point of the show hi i'm clinically anxious i overanalyze everything <laughs> nice to meet you i'm clinically agitated that abusers of both genders mm-hmm. are glorified and that that's the thing right is like dark romance novels do glorify abuse but that's what you expect going it's a dark romance it's a dark romance novel and again i don't want to yuck anyone's yum just because you can you you consume something doesn't mean you necessarily agree with it right but right but the people who like really get into it but these people who are like oh tamlin's tamlin's my book boyfriend ma'am at least go for lucian at least he's cute like the descriptions as well. It's like Lucian's Urban like so Ryzen. cute. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Ryzen has violet eyes. I love violet eyes. Black hair and violet eyes, and he has like wings in his animal cuts. form. Nice. Yeah. 
Yeah. But we should we should be finishing this up or else like I'm going to start going through all the examples of romanticized abuse. Yeah, we can't do that. We'll be here all day. We will be because there's a lot in anime. Yeah, it's There's a lot in anime. Yeah, it's it's uh it's 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 uh... There's a lot in video games too. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, thank you thank you guys for listening. That's all we have for today. I feel really bad for Sav, because she's the one who volunteered to edit this episode. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, this will easily be probably our longest episode. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, But no, thank you for the long conversation, Sav. Go follow us on Spreaker and all those other little places where our podcast is posted. And if you guys uh, love the sound of our voices, you can actually go over to uh, Chibolution Audios on YouTube, where... Uh, we do other shows and stuff, uh, including our newest show, Stories with Sav, as she goes through Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. Should we should we do an analysis on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Super interesting. Yeah, go for it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty that's cool. What this, that's what this show is for. Is it talking to whoever we want to. Um, and if you guys like the sound of my voice... You guys can go over to Chibi Joe BT on Twitch. I do live streams on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We'll see you.